that's a long story, but I'll try to keep it short enough. When I was seven, I won some money playing a card game called Bingo, and I won $7. And I went and bought a little brownie camera that had an American cowboy on the front called Hopalong Cassidy. And so I kind of fell in love with a camera and then didn't have money to buy lots of film and whatnot at seven or anything like that. So I did a lot of painting and drawing as a child growing up through high school, through college. And once, and this is a story for a lot of women photographers, once you have a family, your time to spend in a studio painting is like very less than it used to be. So many women reframe their artwork to be photographic. And so that's kind of my evolution. And at some point it became more serious because I needed to earn a living for my family. And I went back to school, got a master's degree in photography at MIT, which is a big institution in the United States, and, and then got different kinds of jobs and ended up teaching college level at Wellesley College for 25 years. So that's part of the evolution that deals with how you jump into a career in order to make money, to support yourself. And my research on women who were photographers and mothers all kind of came to, a, well, I had to let go of this in order to do that, or I couldn't do it all at once. I had to balance it. And from Julia Margaret Cameron on to the present day, it's a struggle. But at some point you find your voice of what you want to do, what you want to do with the camera. And I think I found that voice at MIT taking self-portraits. It was a rough time and it was my diary, my therapy. It's like, okay, if I take the picture, I can put it away for a while and not deal with that kind of pain. And the self-portraits grew into taking portraits of my kids at home because it, you know, it was like, duh, I'm not gonna be able to go out on the street and take pictures and leave kids at home. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. The scariest, I mean, the world is in a really scary place, so it's really hard for me to kind of focus on what inspires me as much as hoping young people rise up and do something to save the rest of us. Photographically, I, I admire people who are doing all sorts of different kinds of work and expanding the idea from a very traditional documentary kind of approach to doing all sorts of wild, wild things with the photographic medium. Um, nothing in photography scares me, but the world does. How did I balance that? I don't know. Uh, some things just happen. Trying to balance those things I mentioned before has been a, a problem, a conundrum, a wrestling act for many women. I'm sure men have it too, but not quite the same way. So I think making my work at home and about family, about, as I say today, the domestic, the interior life, the interior surroundings, environmental kind of portraits was my way of dealing with trying to find that balance because the house was dark, not a lot of light came in, so I had to figure out where I was going to take a picture, when the kids would go to school. And if I look through the work, there are certain dates that pop up and say, oh, that's when the sun came in. That's when there was a little light. That's when there was a birthday that we celebrated. That was Mother's Day and I figured they owed me <laughs> one picture. So there was a give and take with uh, my children and my partner to be my subject matter. And one thing I think made mine a little bit different than others was that I 
saw myself as, and this is gonna sound a little egotistic, but the core, that mother is usually the core for this, but I was the mother, um, the photographer, uh, my own subject matter. And that what I could do with my own body was to show the pain that sometimes comes with families and things that happen that are not so much fun. But um, I could do that rather than ask that of my children or my spouse. So there are a number of self-portraits where I'm actually bearing my body, but I did, wouldn't do that with my children. And putting myself within that framework, I think, was part of my thinking. The first book that we did was called Pleasant Street, and it was only portraits of myself, my partner, now my husband, and my four children within the house, apartment, small apartment, and right around the yard was like this big. So it wasn't really a yard. The second book is called Vacation because they're all pictures that I took with extended family. The baby on the cover of the book is my nephew with my sister. And I would go to visit relatives on the west coast of the US on vaca well, vacations, but school breaks, summer, different times of the year. So it wasn't all the traditional vacation that we think of of going to the beach and relaxing and having a good time. It was to, to visit friends, to visit extended family. So part of that book is a road trip that we took. I got a big grant from the Guggenheim Foundation to take this road trip, a non-traditional kind of male drive around and take pictures of whatever. We, we went from friend's house to friend's house to relative's house. We packed a car with all of the equipment that I needed and the four kids and some snacks. <laughs> went from place to place and visited and I took pictures. So there's a road trip in there, but every now and then you can see one of the national parks, but it's not Niagara Falls. It's the kids looking out over something that's a little steamy. And if you've been there, you'd recognize it, but it's not, it was in the back of my head to do that. At the moment, I am kind of in between, I think. I'm, sometimes enough is enough and there's more that I can go through the old negatives and find another book, but right now I'm just enjoying this wonderful 15 minutes of fame. So there's a lot more work that I could delve into, but right now I'm taking a little break from thinking about it.